that's kind of the general knowledge of that is you've got to find mm. the biggest expanses of the shallowest water the less water volume the warmer it'll get and you've got to really pay attention again to your electronics when you're fishing those areas and look for those pockets of warmer water within that wherever the water's the warmest that's where they're going to be and if you can have some grass there huh, you don't necessarily have to have grass for this deal but if you do have grass in one of those warming areas, it makes it that much better. Because wherever there's a patch of grass, there's going to be fish when, it, when they're on that deal. Because it's just the best cover they got in that, this much water. One thing that we deal with this time of year is dirty water. We get rains, we get fronts, we get hard rains. Last Sunday night, going into Monday morning, it rained as hard as I've ever seen it rain around here. And it all, dumped. All those ones I caught today were all in the dirtiest water. Yeah. Using a chartreuse and white spinner, uh, chad rate. In the dirtiest water. So you're going to deal with dirty water. You're going to fish in dirty water. And that's part of why chatterbait shines. That's part of why those bright orangish lipless crankbaits shine. Uh, spinnerbaits are really good. I did just buy a fire tiger spinnerbait too. Big, with a thumper yeah, line. big. You I think it'll work. That's the other thing about spinnerbaits this time of year is the bigger the blade, the better. The vibration mm -hmm. is key. And a lot of that has to do with dirty water. But there's top secret that I've never talked about ever on any camera. Nothing. Wait, tell me off to the side first. You don't be, uh, you don't want you don't want me to tell him? What? You want first you want to tell me first. I don't like you as much as I like him. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding, Dave. You're my guy, and you know you're my guy. So when these creeks flow like they did what was weird was Monday, I came out here Monday midday. I didn't get to fish all day Monday. Came out here Monday noon one somewhere in there maybe time them to I only fish for a few hours but um it had rained really really hard that morning like crazy hard i came out here expecting the creeks to be muddied up but they weren't it had rained so hard so fast that dirty water hadn't had a chance to flow in yet so i fished monday afternoon and i thought man this looks good this water's clean this rain didn't kill it that's awesome rain didn't blow it out with mud great that's awesome Came out on Tuesday morning, fished my shell beds for a couple hours. I go back there to where I was just at the afternoon before, and it's like somebody been starting nest quick back there, Jack. <laughs> like all of a sudden, that that flow just came through, and all that dirty water came down, and all these creeks with the grass that I've been fishing catching them so good. It was so muddy. There does come a point when it gets that dirty, and also when it was really clear 12 hours ago, and now it's really dirty 12 hours later. That's a sudden change. Those fish are going to need time to adjust to. Like, you can catch them in dirty, dirty water this time of year, but a sudden change of any kind, temperature, water color, whatever, water level, it's going to be hard to catch them in that. You're going to need some time for those fish to set up and acclimate to it. In every one of these creeks that flow hard, there will be pockets, areas, that that water doesn't flow back into. There will be back, what I call backflow areas. They're off to the side. There's a little corner, whatever. There's a grass mat blocking it off, and behind that grass mat could be as big as this room. Could be as big as this room. Some of them, it's as big as this whole property. It just depends on how big the creek is, how big the backflow area is. They're not easy to find. There's no shortcut for me to tell you to find them. Uh, well, there is one: Google Earth. If you get the Google Earth Pro, where you can search through different dates, you can look at look at that and find a date where you have dirty water in the creeks and zoom in on that and you'll see. There'll be dirty water and then there'll be this little corner over here where the water looks black. That's clean water. Uh, and so you can do some Google Earth research to find it. But other than that, it's just time on the water hunting it down and paying attention to your surroundings as you're finding this dirty water. And I had that today and I found a spot that is the size of this room I can get bit in. So the clear water, never that, in the dirty water. Well, and part of the key component to that too is you still need something in there to make those fish travel in there. You you still need some of those little, especially the smaller ones, won't have a, a depression. They won't have a ditch. They won't have a drain. But if you've got some type of a low spot within that clear water, those fish will move into it in a big way. And so this is one that I drew up. This is an example. It's not accurate, so don't try to guess the creek because it don't look like this. <laughs> I promise you. It don't, I mean, it kind of does, but not really. So what you got is you've got uh, the main channel of the creek, of this big creek, is here, right? And the back of it up here by my head. But the main channel of this creek is, is flowing right here. 
So all that dirty water pours in and spreads out in here. Dirty, 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 dirty. And it keeps flowing down out to the mouth of the creek. This area back here, it does have water that flows into it, but not near as much as this does. Plus the back part of this creek, this, the back part of this side that's not in here, is covered up in flooded mats, like pond weed, shoreline vegetation. But it goes all the way across the back of it where you can't even get your boat back there. So that water, that dirty water, can't flow through all of that. It blocks it. This is some more of those, because this, this is all extremely shallow. Like from here up, outside of the channels and the drains is like one and a half, two foot tops. A lot of it's one foot. And so in areas that are really shallow, that shoreline vegetation has grown out into the middle of the creek a little bit. Not, not real far, but out a little bit. The pond weed, the heavy mat stuff. So this, it goes out here and then it's got little speckled mats all over here on the, the highest of high spots in that super shallow water. Like these are just inches of water underneath these mats, right? And what happens is it flows down and it'll backflow in here a little bit. And you'll get a little bit of, it'll be stain in here, stain in here, maybe a little bit of stain in here. But as it comes back here, it opens up. It's literally, see the bottom in two to three foot of water clear. And it's a big area and there's a drain that runs right down the middle of it. Not a real creek channel, just a low spot, just a ditch that runs right down the middle of it. And there's coontail and hydrilla scattered all in it. That's what makes it really good is having the coontail and hydrilla there. But in all my years, I've been fishing this area. How long ago was 2001? That's 10 years ago. I've been fishing this area for nine. 2001, 10 years ago? 2011? Oh, I thought you 2001. <laughs> I know you get old. Surely you can hear better than that. <laughs> I'm giving you a hard time tonight. I'm I sorry. Am, How about that stuff? I'm like only two years older than you. Two years older? <laughs> Man, I look good. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta stop thinking. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm getting after you tonight a little bit. Um, I've been fishing this area for nine or eight. I think maybe eight years. Well, the water because the water was low in 2011, it started coming back up. So, anyway, and I've specifically fished this area in January and February for at least six or seven years now. I have never once, never once, have I seen a boat back here. Not one time. In January and February. Now, people will go back here in April, May. I've had this all to myself in January and February every single year because there's so much vegetation. And I'm giving away where it is now by saying how much vegetation is in there. But uh, <laughs> people just, they fish the vegetation out here and all that water gets dirtied up and blown out. This doesn't. And I can pull back in there right now. Who's been fishing the lake recently? How hard is it to catch four to eight fish in a day? Hard. You have a pr pretty solid day right now if you catch four to eight fish, most people. Huh? 13 pounds yesterday. 13 pounds in your... Limit. And that's measuring slot fish. That's, that's slot catching fish. slot fish, counting yep. slot fish in your little local deal. Yeah. Yep. So, okay. I can go in here right now, even on a cool trend day like today, we caught four or five back here today. In most days, I'm catching six to eight fish, sometimes 10 or 12, right there. Just that one spot. And big one, like not, a lot of them are two pounders or whatever. I know, I'm getting I you excited. I know, I'm getting you excited, I'll tell you. <laughs> Cause I ain't gonna come out here when you're fishing a Saturday turn, but I can tell you that. Um, but there's a lot of big slots in here and this particular creek, is where I caught my biggest bass I've ever caught. I've had multiple double digits with customers in this creek. Um, so, it, you know, we haven't caught any just giants out of here yet, but that possibility is very real in there any day. And we've caught some big slot fish in there lately. So this is a spot that's so far back, nobody even, nobody thinks to go that far back in January. In fact, the first guy I took back there this year was like, and we caught a few, was like, this doesn't even make sense. Aaron, you went back here with me the other day. Yeah. It's back there, ain't it? Yeah. Nobody thinks to go that far back there. And especially when they're seeing dirty water way down here, like the whole creek's muddy. The whole creek's muddy. And they yeah, just... The thing about it, if I know where it is... Yeah, they turn the around. Main, the main spot back there in the back was chocolate. And over here, there was a little indention 
a little small nodule off of it and it was crystal clear yes. bizarrely clear we may not be talking about the same area because this isn't like it was small. all it was off in the off in the, to the right in the back yeah this is a, pencil. so this is something else you can't pass up either and i saw this the other day is that this matted vegetation right here uh that you can see on the bank but here let's say this is the bank line right here i saw a couple of areas where there was right in behind it yeah behind right here there's an inside grass line that goes mm -hmm. up to the bank that's about 15 inches deep they're not there now they're coming they're, they will be there yeah you know last year we stayed cold the water temp stayed cold a lot longer even into march a little bit the water temp stayed cold and then the week that the mlf bass pro tour was here they had this huge warming trend and a lot of fish just started spawning. There was a lot of fish been wanting to spawn, waiting to spawn. They finally got warm enough water, and they had a full moon earlier that week. You know, a lot of fish all across the lake seemed to jump on the bed all at once during that event. And what David just talked about, if this was the bank line and that grass is right here and there's that gap, that inside line, that was such a key player. If you go back and watch the footage from the basketball tour on Lake Fork, there was most like probably most of the fish were caught in that and i'm gonna have inside a frog line. tied on that mm -hmm. jason christie caught a 10 and a 9 in the same day on a frog yep. on that deal right there so yeah anywhere you see that potato grass pond weed shoreline Doesn't flooded vegetation, kind of vegetation surface vegetation if there's a gap there's between a gap. that and the bank this time of year especially as we creep over mm -hmm. 60 that's key and it, it can be small and be key. I was going to say, the gap doesn't have to be big. It, it can be this can big. Be a small, small gap. Yeah. I mean, five, six, eight foot, but there's a, there's a, a hole there up to the bank. Go in there and, and throw a couple, two or three things in there. Throw a frog, no bites, no bites. Yeah. Throw a swim jig in there. Uh, even throw a sinkle he's talking about. Throw it up there and just yeah. see. <laughs> That's funny. We had a guy last year and, uh, man, we caught some fish that morning, but as the day warm, we were kind of struggling. And uh, we pulled in this pocket that had a big mat of that size. Like the mat was big, but the gap behind it wasn't real big. You know what I mean? And he had been, I had him start throwing a wacky worm because we had started struggling that day. And he takes this wacky worm and throws it behind that grass line. And I see him throw it behind that grass line. I go, boy, you hook one on that back there. On a tw wacky, wacky worm 12-pound line, line right. behind this. And th these mats are that stuff braid can't cut sometimes. So, man, you hook one back there. You better just hold on to him. I'm going to plow through the mat. Oh, he wasn't five minutes later, and you guys have seen it. Was, it was the kid that caught the 12 pounder a few years back. It was his dad. He hooks a nine pound, nine ounce fish behind this mat on a wacky worm. And I'm just like, You got one? He's like, Yeah, I got one. I go, Is it a big one? He goes, I don't know. It looks like a carp. I go, It's green. That's a big one. Let's go. And, uh, and he, I just told him to hold on to the mat, hold on to the fish, you know, just hold him against that mat, just hold light tension. And I'd had to plow the boat through it because he wasn't coming out. But anyway, just a funny story. Squirrel, I chased it. There it went. What else, Dave? There, I mean, that's the two patterns. In summary, that's the two. For me, that's the two patterns. And, and my deal is, I just get further back and much shallower than the other guys that I know. You know, there's guys that like to fish shallow out here that'll fish shallow early, and they're concentrating on these creek channels and these drains and four and five and six foot of water and you know sometimes two and three. But man, I've had so much success, and I think part of that is the fact that I've just got those fish to myself a little bit, you know, somewhat. I'm one of the only ones taking advantage of those fish that are so far extremely shallow and extremely far back. And anytime you find any source of fish on this lake, on this lake, with the population that lives here and the size of fish that live here, if there's something that you can do to have any percentage of the population of fish to yourself, you can really make some hay. You know, you can really make some hay because there's just so many fish and so many big fish in this lake. And the deal with it being hard to catch fish out here is one million percent pressure. It's one million percent pressure. Well, and also, I mean, I got an interesting story about that. They had a big kayak tournament here last year. Um, maybe Every year. February. I mean, it was cold. And uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm on the water that day pre-fishing. Uh, I got trips coming up, whatever. And, and all over this lake, there was this, uh, they all call it different things. Potato grass. Uh, gator grass. It's that gator grass. It's pond you know, stringy, just bad stuff, all right? And uh, I'm throwing a Cinco to the outside of it, all right? Working in this, and there's a little pocket that's a narrow pocket that runs back up about 50, 60 yards. And and I'm, I'm pulling up there. To, I've been hitting several of those pockets. And I'm on trolling motor. I'm getting ready to go in this. And here comes this kayak around this point. 
on plane. This guy, I mean, I'm looking at him going, dude, he is trolling. He is getting it. And he's, hey, man, can I go in there? Can I go in there? And I was like, uh, uh, and I knew there was a kayak tournament. And I said, well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'll be a spectator boat. Why not? So I was pulled down right there in the front of that pocket. And he goes up in there. He stands up in this kayak. And he's punching a one-ounce jig in one foot of water in this grass. All right? And one foot of water. And I'm watching. I usually think of kayak guys as fishing hippies, but I like this guy. And I'm watching this like guy this thinking, guy. I'll leave him wrong. And, uh, and he's just going along there, going along there. Next thing you know, boom, he's set up like, he's got this fish that's fighting all around and everything. He gets it in the boat. And, you know, and I'm, I'm like, no way. I didn't bring my knife and fork, so I'm glad I didn't tell him. And um, he measured it 20 inches. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. In a foot of water in that thick, thick, thick junk, all right? It, this colder water. And I thought, that's bizarre. So I ease in there, and I said, uh, I asked the guy, I said, uh, how many of you called doing that? He said, dude, he said, about an hour ago, I had a 10-pounder to the side of the kayak. And on my jaws on the ground. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And he said, I said, how, many, how much weight lynches you got right now? He said, I got about 80, 88 inches right now. On five, on his best five. Yeah. On his, yeah, and I'm like, seriously? With a one-ounce jig and a foot of water. And so I sat there and watched him for a while. He didn't get another bite. So I asked him what his name was, all right? And he told me. So I move on. I go looking for other pockets like that. And uh, that night I got on the kayak site and I looked him up. He was in second place. And uh, I was like, I'll be that gum. Hmm. So next day, I go back to that same area, and I'm looking for him. And I asked several of the kayak guys, uh, where's, uh, where's Russ at? And he said, oh, he's back there in the back. I go back there. I don't see him. I don't see him nowhere. I can't find him. So I wanted to see this again. And so uh, I, I never found him. And so at the end of the day, that night, I looked it up. He won the tournament. Eight grand. And that's what he was doing. Yeah, so that tournament was a national National. level championship type kayak tournament. There's dudes from all over the country. In fact, we had a seminar the night of the registration, night before that tournament. There was fishing hippies, which is what I call kayakers. (laughs) I mean, this isn't the biggest crowd we ever had because that night was. I mean, it was insane. We couldn't even pack them in here any tighter. And they were all in here. It it was just crazy, man. But when you don't think it'll work, sometimes you get... You get like really, you know. So when you don't think it'll work, most times it won't work. But every once in a while, every yeah, once in a while, I was shocked. But he caught every fish yeah. doing that, punching that that potato grass in a foot of water. Because I went behind him and I stuck a rod down there and checked it. I wanted to see how deep that water was, and I was like, oh boy. But when you don't think, but you know, like he said, the one he caught, the big one he caught, the fin was sticking out of the water. Should have been. I didn't yeah, see there it. There you have it. I mean, so. Yeah. I mean, don't underestimate yeah. any. And that, on that punching deal, you know, in the right water temps, they'll definitely get it. I mean, I'm a big time. You guys watch them, though. I love the punch. I love the punch. Man, I love the punch. Um, in the right time of year, they will get under those really shallow mats. The problem for me is during that time of year, I'm usually looking at them on a the bed. So by the time I'm done looking at them on bed, I need them to have a little bit more depth under that mat for them to get under it. But, yeah, in the springtime when the water temps are like peak prime, they will get under a one-foot mat for sure. And I have caught some unbelievably big bass punching pretty shallow stuff out here, really. Uh, it's very effective. If you like that type of fishing, and, you, and this year we've got a – because the water never got real cold this year. We never got below about 49, 48 degrees in the winter. Mm-hmm. So a lot of these – mats didn't die back as much as they normally do so the water warms it's going to grow more like that punching bite's going to be a deal this year on that flooded bank vegetation uh it's going to be a pattern that will definitely play and one thing i love about that punching is it's so consistent because big florida strain bass love big heavy dominant cover and there ain't nothing bigger heavier thicker piece of cover in any lake than one of those flooded mats they will absolutely get under there every day if it's the right temperature and the right time of year for them to be in that area, they will get under that mat every single day. No matter how bad, how tough the bite is, whatever the conditions are, if you go to flipping and you're getting through that mat all day, you're going to catch some good fish and a good amount of them. You know, Creek bends in the backs of some creeks. Hyacinths will push up. Over them, yeah. And push into yeah. the back where a bend is or something like that. Yep. And I've taken a two-ounce tungsten and put on there with a and double... Uh, with two bobber stops on it, all right, to keep it from sliding up. 
and then a lot of times if you just can't find a hole to work it through you got to flip it up into the air and let it just crash, crash through. down through yeah. it and cause some really good fish yeah. that are just laying up underneath that creek in that bend right there yeah. you know so don't disregard you know anything as far as you know especially on a day where you're struggling you know as far as that goes and it takes a little bit of time to sit down the bottom boat try it but you know what you may get surprised sometimes yeah those mats are effective no doubt punching those mats is effective Questions? Yeah, we need questions. I told y'all we were going. I told y'all we were going to rely on y'all, and we didn't shut up for forty-five minutes. So. <laughs> got to be a, uh, got to be a, a thrilling question in here somewhere. Yeah, I think yeah, it, when they're when they're up feeding up on these hard spots, shell beds, whatever, when they're done and they leave, do they stay at the same level? So this time of year, they don't move as much when the water's cold. So they kind of, you know, I drew that picture of them specks. So what you'll see is they'll get up there at times and get active and the loons will show off and then you'll catch them up shallow. And then that'll kind of die down. And, and those shad, from my best belief, from what I see on my electronics every day, is they just pull off the side of those shell beds and kind of hang out there and suspend. And they usually do stay, there's a depth. You know, uh, a week ago, 10 days ago, it was, it was 8, 10, some areas as deep as 12, usually 8 to 10 foot of water. Uh, last couple of days, it seems like it's been like 4 foot of water. They're just not getting deeper than that. So they do pull off and drop down a little bit, but they don't go very far. You know. The re reason I was asking, I went, I went to Dale uh, probably around noon today, and there was one loon in there that it was just doing a lot of window shopping. It yeah, it's cruising. Over here. Yeah. yeah. And, and I never saw any shad any sign of life or anything around that whole area on your on your electronics yeah. at all yeah hmm. so you know that, that's why I'm here. now i've been in there every day in the yeah, morning yeah. so they may you know i've been in there in the morning so they may be doing something different in the afternoon that i'm missing but it seems like whether they're up on there or out off they're staying around it but that may just be a morning thing so i could be wrong on that i would imagine if they're pulling off that the only place they're pulling is out to the middle of the pond yeah. you know because i have seen sometimes when it's really inactive that those loons will kind of be working in the middle of the pond so i'm assuming there's right. bait out there in the middle i just don't want to go out there drifting around that whole big old pond trying to find suspended fish you know what i mean like yeah. i'd rather go do something else but well you can also when you're you're getting in these pockets or getting in these creeks and you're going back and you see a little indention a pocket a little small 30 40 yard back if you see loons in the back of that oh, yeah. if you have a square bill tied on yeah. just take a minute flip your troll motor or go back and throw where those loons are in the back of this little indention or something like that because i have seen it before where for some strange reason those shad or like he's talking about have herded up in there and these loons follow them in there and bass are going to be right there with them you know almost right oh what about pelicans well you know, are they kind of a telltale like loons yeah i have have a different well, view of the pelican one of the creeks i went to there was there was a of yeah, I think they're eating. They so I think they're eating everything. Yeah, you want I think they're eating bugs and crawfish out of the grass because they get back here in some of these shallow grassy creeks, and you'll see them back here just take up yeah. scoops of everything. I think the loons. The the loons the best. <laughs> Did you hear about my guard swans? Your guard swans? I have hired two swans. If you hold buzz me, they're going to eat you. Oh, really? And right. these swans are bigger than anybody in this and room. And I do know where that is. And I've got two of them. And they tried to get my boat the other day, and I had to straighten them out. I told them, no, 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 I'm not the hold buzzer. Everybody else is the hold buzzer. <laughs> and so we're on the same page now. And anybody goes, I literally do have two swans in an area that will try to come in your boat. I think they've got young ones. They've got a nest. They've got eggs. They've got young ones on the bank. Because if you get over towards that one island back in there, they're coming in your yeah, boat. They're always right there in front of that little island swimming back and forth. Well, the other day, they were over there on the far side, and I came in to the right side of the island to fish that drain. We were going down the edge of that lily pad area, and as long as we were in that pad stem area, they were, I mean, they got up and flew, crashed about 50 feet from the boat, got up and flew again and crashed about 20 feet from the boat, and were like paddling and squawking and coming in the boat, Jack. They got to about five, ten feet from the boat, so I had to holler at them with a net in my hand like I was about to hit them. Most times swans won't do that unless they feel threatened, but if it's a goose or a beast. No, this is a swan. I know, but I'm saying He couldn't even fit on that couch. That's how big he is. Oh if he stood up and spread his wings out, he can't fit on that couch. 
Hmm. It's the biggest bird I've ever seen beside an ostrich in a zoo. <laughs> <laughs> like, I ain't never seen a bird that big. And they, you gotta watch his video. They usually stay way far away. They don't bother you none. But boy, they had an attitude the other day. I straighten them out and tell them, you attack Ozio. You don't attack me. Because <laughs> I will be in there. I know. <laughs> you done hobos me there before. I know how this goes. I call seven pounder under his nose, too. That was tournament day. I'm going to go in there in tournaments. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, questions. More questions. Come on. Don't be shy. Nothing. We got crickets. Nothing. So when you're running, keep your eye on the lake level. Oh, I got to tell them about how I almost wrecked my boat today. Uh -oh. I almost wrecked my boat today. How'd you manage that? The one that, you just is the one that just got put up for sale. Yeah, I almost wrecked it today. Yeah, I almost wrecked it today. Yeah, that would got somebody a good discount there. But I didn't. The good news is I didn't wreck my boat. Uh, I did almost wreck my boat today. I was driving down a not marked boat lane, and I was going to the back. Yeah, well, of course. Listen, I normally don't have I normally don't have like a hard cutoff time on guide trips per se. You know, I'll just fish till. Either we're all tired of fishing or it gets dark or whatever. And uh, especially this time of year when it gets dark, or at least it does. And, but, you know, on seminar days, I've got a hard cutoff time. And I had one more area I wanted to hit. It took a while to get back here. And I was, I was getting it, trying to get back here and get some time to fish it before we had to come in. And as I was driving, in the middle of that creek, there's a really good shell bed that I've done really well on in the past. And I hadn't seen any loons on there. And I fished a couple times, hadn't caught none off, none off it, which is not normal. It's normally one that gets better a little bit later. Uh, but as I was driving today, I was driving, I just glanced, and there was three loons on it. And I went, Arr! like, I literally cut my boat so hard. You know how they do that video where that skier turns around? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, mine did that today. Oh, you are. <laughs> I've done that before, and, and the where the, back, the rear end yeah. went under the water. And came no, I didn't up. do it that bad. It didn't do it that bad. But it did grab and, like, turn, like, extremely yeah. hard. And because I saw loons. You didn't and throw I, the person out? No. No. I saw loons, and I was going about 70. I was literally going about 70, and I saw loons, and I just cut it, dude. I just let off the gas and just cut it hard as I could, and it was like, whoom, took off. And then I was going towards trees, and I wasn't stopped yet, and I was like, oh, God, stop. Please stop. Please stop. <laughs> Where's the brake, fella? A friend of mine did We didn't that. catch any fish off of it either. That's the worst part. He was going pretty fast, and he turned. It went, like, I'll wreck the boat if I'm going to catch him. At Toledo Bend, but, it's got a real hard turn in the, in the main boat lane, and he was getting it pretty good, and he hit that thing, and that boat jumped out of the water like that. It threw him from the... the driver's seat to the passenger seat and yeah. he had a hold of the bar he was by himself at the boat yeah. and i mean it so will. that's how close it was for him going out so the first time i ever experienced the skeeter hook turn when i turned one too hard yeah that's that's how i ended up was down in the floor of the boat yeah. on the passenger yeah. side it'll do it it'll, it'll sling back. you if stump you ain't especially if you ain't expecting it it's gonna throw you all right hard. stump the pro we're we're close to being done right yeah sure. stump the pro do gizzard shad and threadfin shad spawn at the same time no oh I figured you'd say yes. Why'd you figure that? I just thought you would. Because you, you think because I'm dumb. Because the dot is bigger on that one versus the other. You think I'm dumb. <laughs> That's what it is. That's a big dumb. Well, so which well, one spawns first? Gizzard Chad. Gizzard Chad. Absolutely. Gizzard Chad will start spawning here pretty soon. Uh, if the main lake, where these areas where they pull up in the main lake, when that starts getting up into the mid to upper 50s, Gizzard Chad will start spawning. Is there a Thread water finch. they prefer for that? Yeah. Like, they, they, it's like fin Chad spawn in... 70, technically. Yeah, threadfin kind of wait till it gets about 70 degrees. 68, to start 70. Yeah, yeah. And they'll start showing up, shall yep. But do the gizzard shad go at 60, 62, you know? You, you know, it's 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 a little bit under that from what I've read up on. My research says anywhere, 58. anywhere even from like really? 50, 55, 56, they'll kind of start and they really get going as it gets in the upper, like 58, 59, 60. So water temp wise, they're, they're a lot like a bass. Hmm. Yep. Yep. Because when the water's cold, every now and then, You'll see a gizzard chad on the surface just going like this. Like this. I mean, just wiggling. Yeah, very shallow. I mean, a big one, too. Eight-inch one. You're thinking, he's getting ready to be sucker for somebody. I don't think people realize how big these gizzard chad are on this oh, lake. Yeah, I mean, I, I've pulled one out of the water that was floating, that was stunned, that was, I mean, 16 and a half inches. Like, I measured him because I was like, that looks like a good under. But he yeah. was just over. I had a guy one day with that. I, we're going along on a sec on Slot a fish. A slot fish gizzard chad. Yep. <laughs> on a point and I, I'm looking over there and I'm seeing the water disturbed 
And I got closer and closer and closer, and I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking, God, dog, that's the holy guy. I said, you got that swim bait. Throw that swim bait over there. And so he makes a long cast by it, and he's reeling it by that with the water. And I looked, I could see it was a big gizzard shad. Yeah. Just doing, this was a few years ago. And he got that thing close to that gizzard shad. Wham! Eight and a half pounder Ooh. hit it. Was sitting probably right underneath that gizzard shad. Cody on. Mays, that frog for the first time. So Cody Mays in here tonight because he's being a little girl. Yeah. Cody, you're a little girl. <laughs> um, but the first time I took Cody fishing, we were over on Lake Athens, and we were fishing this grass line with frogs first thing in the morning in summertime. And behind us, we hear this big blow up. And I look over there, and there's a big gizzard shed over there stunned on the surface. And I told Cody, I said, throw over there by that gizzard shed. There's a bass fixing to come back and eat that sucker. He just knocked him out. And he missed the cast. Like, he goes to the cast over there and missed it by like 20 or 30 feet. And I was like, at that point, he's going to make a long cast. Like, it's my, it's my turn. Like, you missed your chance. Now's my chance. And I put that frog right beside that gizzard shed and twist it twice and like an eight or nine pounder come up and eat it. I, th I threw a frog out in like 12 or 15 foot of water, open water, no structure, no timber, yeah. no nothing. It was just, it was looking at that shed. I twitched that frog twice and that bass, I'm talking about came unglued on it, Jack. And it's like an eight or nine pounder. That was awesome. It was awesome. You know, before, is there any more questions? For sure, we don't want to leave any questions unanswered. So before we get out of here, I do want to uh, give a couple of people some big thank yous and some shout outs. And first one obviously has to be Lake Fort Marina. Um, I just, I appreciate them working with us. They accommodate us. They help us with this. And just some of the best people that you'll ever meet. It's a great facility, uh, lodging, food, tackle, boat ramps. They got the best of all of it. Um, so they're awesome, man. We appreciate them so much for what they do for us. Second one is Ronnie Parker, Lake Fork Tackle. I wore my hoodie tonight for a reason. So I wanted to shout out Ronnie. He's been, uh, he even joined in the last two or three hours of the live stream that night. I'm, th I'm assuming he just woke up at like two or no, three in the morning. No. Because he's really old. No. He didn't? He was up all night with you. He couldn't sleep. You have to be kidding me. No. You talk to him. I'm telling I you. Will. I will. I will. I haven't talked to him since then. But, yeah, he joined in the live stream. It was fun. But, uh, you know, I went a while without talking to Ronnie just because I had so many of his baits. I didn't have a re need to go back to the store. And going into this winter, I was short on live magic sheds, which – Speaking of shout outs, by the way, if you're throwing a chatterbait this Great time of year bait. and you're not throwing a live magic shad as the trailer in the wintertime, you are wrong. And it's not just me that says that. If you look at every tour pro's boat when they're fishing cold water and they're throwing a chatterbait, they may not admit it, but they got a Lake Fork Tackle live magic shad. And I know it for a fact because they all stop by that store when they come through town and get them and get buckets of them. Um, it is the best chatterbait trailer in cold water, hands down. But I recently had to go back over there before I made my trip down to Rayburn back in January. And I hadn't talked to Ronnie in forever, man. And, and, you know, sometimes you just, life takes you away from people. And you come back, and meet them again, see them again. And it's like, man, I forgot how great of a guy that guy is. If y'all don't know, that's one of the best businesses around here. It's been around here. It's been a staple around this lake for a long time. And the store over there, the store inside is not huge or anything. It's a manufacturing facility more than anything. And they ship baits all over the world. But... Um, the man that runs it is just such an accommodating man. And as I sit here at this seminar, and I thought about this coming up here tonight, I want to make a point to say this. As I sit here at this seminar, I realize these wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Ronnie Parker. Because I can't remember if it was me that came to him with this idea or him that came to me. But when I first started making all social media content, me and him got together on the idea of a seminar, and we did it at his shop in the office. He would clear the, the office space behind the storefront. He would clear the office space out every two weeks, and we would do seminars in the office. And we outgrew that, you know, and we needed new space, and that's one probably the main reason we ended up here. We just needed more space, and we've outgrown this at times, you know. Some of you guys are still standing over there. Um, but if it wasn't for Ronnie Parker and Lake Fork Tackle, a lot of what I do wouldn't happen. They were a big supporter of me early on, and Ronnie supports anybody that wants a chance to be supported. And that's just who he is, the man he is. And I love that man. He, he was like family to me for a long time, and he still is. He's just like a little more distant family these days because I don't see him as much. But uh, I just want to say thank you to him for all the support he's given me for all these years and these seminars that we do. I mean, they wouldn't exist without him and, and Lake Fort Tackle, so we appreciate them very much. And, of course, all of you guys, man, and all of you guys in the camera. Um, I've been saying it a lot lately. I've been having as much fun on the water as I can remember having here lately. 
I don't know why I've been in such a good mental space fishing wise and just <clears> in general, but because you've been on my spots. <clears throat> <laughs> That's pretty good. I, I, I earned that one tonight, by the way. I gave you a hard time. So I earned that one. So, uh, but no, it, it just I, the happiness that I get to experience every day in my life with what I do is unbelievable, and I feel so truly lucky, fortunate, blessed, however you want to term it. And it is all because of y'all. You that are standing in the room, you that are watching behind the camera. Uh, I can't ever tell. I always say this: I can't ever tell you enough. So. Thank each and every one of y'all so very, very much. We've already done one fishing with a, I hate calling you guys subscribers because I feel like that's demeaning in some way. I don't know why, but a viewer, whatever you want to call it. And we went fishing this week. We filmed that. That's going to be coming out next week. Uh, John, I know we've got to go out with you. So I want to do some more giveaways like that throughout the year. I'm going to try my best to give back to you guys every way I can just to show y'all that I do sincerely. It's not just talk. Lip service. We are, yeah, it's not just lip service. Thank you. That's what I was trying to think of. <laughs> he is now, commander in chief. I commander. will. I will tell you this. I told all y'all this. On the receiving end of that. When we do fish with subscriber days, that ain't no guide trip, Jack. Like, you come and fishing with me, and I'm gonna try and catch all of them. <laughs> it's up to you to catch yours. <laughs> I'm gonna catch mine. <laughs> so He'll get in his left or right pocket, or you have no chance. <laughs> yeah, Aaron, Aaron did get. The first thing I told Aaron, he jumped on back and said, "Man, come on, up here fish with me." He's like, "No," and he caught the first one day. And then he doesn't know this, like Aaron doesn't know this, I never said this, I don't think I really showed this, but he caught the first one, I was like, I'm about to beat his butt. That's like, <laughs> cause I'm so competitive, instinctively, like when he caught the first one, there was a part of me, and I tried to control it, but there was a small part of me like, it's on. It's on. I'm about to whip. <laughs> and I think the rest of the day, I don't, I think, you, did you only catch one more the rest of the day? And I caught the rest of them? I don't know, the video will show it, it's coming out next week. We're but. going down this weed line, and I, Throwing a swim bait, and I threw it up there, and I'm reeling that thing over some some junk. This is not true. I can tell y'all what before he <laughs> says. <laughs> this is true, and I mean this, this fish blows up on it, and I mean he missed it, and I'm reeling it back in. This jack leg reaches down, grabs a frog, and throws the frog over there before I can get another cast in. Oh yeah, yeah, I do remember that. that is true. That is true. Yeah. Five pounder. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I'm just telling you, it's a lot like the Cody mate. You missed yours. You missed your chance. He blew up on you first. You missed him. It's my job to catch him. Well, I, I cued him for you. I throw a seven and a half foot rod with a handle about that long. So there you go. You get jab him. You just jab him. <laughs> He's coming for you. I want, I want you right beside me all day. All right. That's it. All right. It's all right. I'll tell you what. I'll take one heck of a shot to the ribs to catch one. Just to let you know. You can hit me in the ribs all day. Every time I catch one, I won't mind a bit. Yes, sir. Man, this has been fun, dude. Thank y'all so much. David, my brother. All right, brother. Sir, Thank I appreciate you. you joining me as always. We'll get David back again soon. We need to get you on water and film an episode on water soon. We need to well, do that, we're too. We're supposed to have a, he been a drop shot versus shaky head video or a... We've got some good ideas. We just don't ever get out and do it. What I really want to do is the line the size. seven pound versus 17 pound line challenge. Does it make a difference? That's what I really want to do. Yeah, we've got some really good ideas for some interesting videos. We do need to do those. It just, I, don't, I don't throw line that line. He doesn't either. Neither does any sane person. No, 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 no. <laughs> Nobody's sane in Texas. Double digits with 10 I, I pounds up, and lighter I, line. I grew up right here on the curve mm -hmm. in the front of the ring. On, and 15 pound test, big game, got broke one day. I said, I know what to do for that. 20 from now on. 25. 25. Like, two, months, two months ago, true story. Nobody ago. within is their right mind is throwing seven no. pound test line on Lake before Ford. Before we go, before we Nobody. go, true story. I had a client call me up. He says, man, I need you. I need, I need to catch a fish. I've been fishing this lake for, and I can't just get bit on this lake. And I said, well, I said, all right, I got, I'm going to show you something different. Right. Drop shot. All right. I'm, I'm, you don't like to hear this word. That's like. Like listen, like you can. I'm not saying drop shot's going to win you a tournament or two, but <laughs> anyway. you're but you're still going to look gay doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Just so we go to this spot, all right, and and he uh, he's throwing this, and I got ten pound line rigged on this drop shot, all right. So we throw it out there, and I said, now, all right, I says if you get one now, just 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 keep tension on it and let him run. So we're going along. I catch a couple of small ones. He catches a small one. Then he hooks a good. one. And he's fighting this fish, he's fighting this fish, and he's so excited that, hey, get this fish, I got the net, he gets it close to the boat, and it makes a big run and breaks the line. He said, I, done, I knew it. And I said, you had your thumb on that spool, didn't you? 
well, yeah, he was pulling too much drag. And I said, what's a drag for? All right. And I said, you can't do that. You can't put your thumb on that drag. This is designed to catch more fish. All right. So I re-rigged him up and all of that. It was a five pounder. And so I catch a four pounder right behind that. And he says, well, I can't believe that. So then the next cast he throws in there and he, he catches one. And he's got this fish literally six or seven minutes he had this fish on. And it's pulling drag, pulling drag. And I'm watching his thumb. I'm standing right next to it. And I'm watching his thumb. Well, put your thumb on that drag. Hawkeye. On it. And Hawkeye. And he fights his fish. He gets it to the boat. Fish tired out. Netted it. Over six pounds. On the drop shot on 10-pound line. And he said, I just can't believe it. Yeah. I can't believe it. I just, I'm, a, I'm just going to go ahead and throw the 15-pound line out there and boat flip him. Like, right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. But the point was, was that it, it, in certain times, and he yeah. and I have had some good that's conversations the deal. That's the deal. This. We need to do that video. Is will 10-pound versus 15 pounds, 7 seven pounds versus more whatever. bites. And it doesn't I've make a difference. story after story after story after story David believes confirms it. I think it will. David believes that it does get you more bites. I believe that it might in some instances, but they're pretty rare in this watercolor. That's my belief. Yeah. But uh, David believes otherwise, yeah, and that's okay. Yeah. We it's, have, I have so it's many okay. stories that go yeah. back and forth. So this is a we can do a whole seminar on this subject alone. No, no you can do a whole seminar <laughs> online size. I could. You to play a big part of that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes. 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 A lot, a lot and of factors. This is one of, factors. of those times, and uh, I am fishing. I am fishing thirty foot of water with an insanely light line. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, yeah, I'm not fishing 30 foot of water. Right. Uh, no. That's the difference right there. No, but I mean. I might no, not no, fish no, no. three foot of water no, on no. some days. We <laughs> caught, uh, listen, this is a true story too. We were uh, fishing a tournament, Richard and I was back three, four years ago, and we caught a lot of fish that day. We had two 10 pounders on 12 pound line, wow. two 10 pounders, neither one of them were overs. They were both 23 and three quarters. A 10-2 and a 10-4. We couldn't. We, we call that a trash fish in those tournaments. That's a trash fish. Hey, we've held y'all here for a long time. I'm real hungry. We're going to go eat because you got him talking about line size. Everybody, hold your seats before you leave. Y'all do me a favor real quick. Everybody wave at the camera real quick over here in the corner. <laughs> That's all I needed. Y'all are going to be on TikTok later. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank y'all for coming. Appreciate it so much. Yeah, you were front in that picture, too. I did. I front ended, I even front ended the you picture. <laughs> well, you know what? If you're in my boat, you're going to get front ended. If you're on my social media page, you're going to get front ended. <laughs>